So my name is Moya Nevesi and um, I'm going to provide an overview this morning of some uh, research that we completed um, quite recently looking at the state of play of short food chains across Europe and um, just to let you know that we have published a, a report from that study and there are copies available downstairs um, if you do want to take um, a copy um, please please feel free. So today I can only give um, a snapshot and an overview of what we did, but I've tried to pick out some of the, the key uh, conclusions. I'm speaking on behalf of a um, bigger team of, of researchers, um, uh, most of whom are sitting here in, in the audience, and hopefully you'll get to meet them as the day goes on. Um, so the project was uh, funded by the European Commission and ran for approximately 18 months. The project aim was to describe the state of play of short food supply chains and local food systems in the EU. And also, um, we were looking at evidence which would justify or not the introduction of a possible new label for local products and direct sales, which is initiative, an initiative that the European Commission is, um, has been interested in and uh, has been looking at the feasibility of, of that. So the study was um, contributing to, to um, the thinking about that, that possibility. So what I'll do today is try and give an overview. Um, first, a brief policy context, but not too much because we do have a policy representative here who will speak later. Brief introduction to the methods uh, and definitions. Um, an overview of the evidence and the trends and the business models that we identified then some reflections on this idea of a label, and we'd be very interested to get your views on that throughout the day. Is a new label a good idea? What, what would it do? And there's some brief conclusions. Can we send a runner, please, and get the, that sorted? So... The... Um, policy context then, um, there's an interest in short food supply chains and local food systems because of the potential social, economic and environmental benefits. And I'll just run through these, some, these are some of the arguments where, why policies makers have been interested. Um, short food supply chains could add value, uh, particularly for small producers who have been able to, to retain more of the added value on the product by selling more directly to the end consumer. There's also an argument that they can potentially reduce carbon emissions and waste. Also, potentially uh, contribute to social inclusion and quality food products, so recreating links between producers and consumers. And several member states have developed uh, legal frameworks or incentives to promote short food supply chains. Um, France is a particularly interesting case, and we will hear about that a little later where there is a nationally agreed definition of a short food supply chain or circuit court, which um, is very interesting and very useful to have that definition. Short food supply chains are eligible for support through rural development programmes. And there's been a number of publications <coughs> from European institutions which have called for promotion and support of these um, food chains and also this idea of a new, potentially a new label. In terms of our study, what did we do? First thing we did was a systematic review of short food chains and local food systems. So we did conduct this using a systematic review methodology. We looked at social, economic and environmental impacts and institutional support. So we were looking at the studies, what's the evidence around these issues, what research has been done and what can we know from it. Uh, we primarily focused on peer-reviewed research. Um, mainly English but some French literature that was so just so you know the literature we've looked at approximately a hundred papers read in detail we also did a database we made a database of examples of short food chains from across Europe and we had at least one from every member state and we did some comparative analysis from from what that could tell us and then some detailed case studies from France Austria and Hungary 
Just a note on the working definitions that we used. So we did distinguish between local food systems and short food chains. So a local food system we understand as one where the production, processing, trade and consumption occur in a defined geographical area. Um, so that's, the, that's how we understand that. Um, but what some of the problems with that are that there's no legal or agreed definition of what local means. So it can mean different things in different places for different contexts contexts. Um, there are also difficulties when we think about food and whether we consider all the inputs. Uh, is everything 100% local? So there's some interesting issues around the definition of local food. In practice, it's often defined as being uh, food which is uh, produced, processed, retailed within a, a particular radius. It could be 20 to 100 kilometres from the point of sale. The short food chains, on the other hand, is looking at the actual links between the producer and the consumer. Um, so <coughs> it could be um, a direct sale, or it could be a, with a minimum number of intermediaries. So for example, in France, it is defined as a maximum of one intermediary between the producer and the consumer. But it's also very important that the product reaches the consumer embedded with information. So the consumer knows about that product, where it came from, who made it. As we went through the project, we began to focus more on the short food chains and we really adopted that as our sort of working concept because we felt it was, um, it gave us a good focus to look at the nature of this relationship between producer and consumer. And we focused on these types of products where the consumer has direct access to the identity of the farmer. So, what did we find then? What are the evidence? What's the trends? And I'm really drawing on the literature review and the database that we constructed, because I haven't really got time to go into the case studies, but as I say, they are reported fully in our report. So, what did we find? Well, in terms of the published literature, there is a wealth of case studies. What There's less comparative work across regions and across types of short food supply chains, and there are... Um, methodological difficulties in how do you collect comparative data across different countries and from often micro enterprises, very small enterprises. Um, and especially in terms of economic impact, we found um, a lack of robust data on economic impacts. But one of the interesting sources we did find was the French Agricultural Census, which does have some data, for example, which shows, which is suggesting that farms which are using short food chains have a higher than average employment on their farms. In terms of looking at the impact of short food chains, there are a few studies which kind of have a before and an after, so it's very difficult at the moment to, to really uh, evaluate impact. But um, there is a strong consensus around, particularly around social benefits, and as from the studies that we looked at, a strong trend to argue that the short food chains deliver social benefits, although in terms of the economic and environmental benefits, there's more um, diversity of views. One, one thing that's notable is a consistent consumer interest. This has been demonstrated in national and international studies, so you can see some interesting figures from the Eurobarometer surveys, which have 26,000 plus <coughs> respondents, showing high interest in buying locally and in people knowing where their food comes from. But then one of the, the points that people often make about this is that people may well say they're interested, but then sometimes we see uh, an attitude behaviour gap and it isn't always translated into behaviour. Uh, but there's lots of reasons why that can be. In terms of social impact, so I mentioned there was quite a strong theme in the literature about this. Some of the things that short food supply chains are credited with promoting trust and social capital, promoting well-being, developing a sense of community, some evidence of behaviour change in terms of people changing behaviour as they buy from short food chains, perhaps more pro-environmental behaviours, and also promoting knowledge exchange and learning, as well as skills development for producers and consumers. Economic, and now I'm flying through these, but as I said, there's the evidence on this is fairly patchy, but some evidence that these chains can maintain rural employment. There's synergies with tourism, which have been shown in quite a few studies. 
um, generally agreed that a higher value of the a higher share of the value is retained locally. Um, there are some studies which are saying labour costs and the direct marketing costs and transport costs can be a problem. And also, I think it's important to note that the profit may not be the only indicator of success for many of these small enterprises. Some of them are profit suffices. They want to maintain a particular lifestyle or a farm business, but they don't want to keep growing and growing and expanding. So sometimes we need to look at how is success evaluated. And often short food chains are combined with other types of food chains. In, in businesses will combine long and short food chains. So for that reason, again, it's difficult to know what, what impact the short food chain has on the business, and you need to look at holistically at the farm businesses. In terms of environmental impacts, um, the intuition tells us or suggests that localisation of production can lead to less greenhouse emissions, but as you're probably aware, there are studies which are showing that the local element of production is not sufficient to ensure this, but what we also need to look at are logistical arrangements, energy consumption and production methods. From the database, so that was from the, the research, but from our database, um, so we had 84 examples of short food chains. This was an illustrative database rather than being exhaustive. Um, and it's the data that we have is taken from what's publicly available. So what do the schemes tell us? about themselves, what's in the public domain, with a slight over-representation of Northern European examples. But what did we learn from looking at that? We found that most types of short food chains are, ava are available in, in all parts of the European Union. In the southern member states, we think there's more trend for them to be on-farm sales, whereas in Northern Europe, we find perhaps a slight more diversity in off-farm sales and different types of structures. Most of the examples are sales in proximity, so they're really the backbone of local food systems. They're trading mainly fresh fruit, vegetables, followed by meat and dairy. Um, they're small in our database, so remember I'm just talking about our data database here, which is illustrative. Over half employing less than 10 people. The farm size really ranges anything from a hectare to a thousand. They can serve anything from 12 households to 30 thousand households as in the case of multi-producer groups and box schemes. It's interesting that most of them implement either full or partial organic practices um, and also that we found a number that have survived that have survived for five years or more which suggests they're working, they're living, they're living five, ten <coughs> years. And when you look at the websites and the way these schemes present themselves they emphasize the social capital, they emphasise quality and trust above the other things. We're developing um, a way of thinking about these, and this is very early stages, but you might, be, might have comments on this, to maybe think in terms of traditional and neo-traditional models. The traditional models are the family, farm-based models um, based on a farm using traditional artisan methods, they're maintaining rural jobs, this doesn't mean they lack innovation, far from it. They're very innovative, but they use tradition as a big selling point. And then the neo-traditional, this is collaborative networks, producers, consumers, institutions. They're often off-farm sales or delivery schemes or CSAs. Um, some CSAs develop from a community group who then go and find themselves a grower. Um, these in particular emphasise social values. They may have radical or critical agendas. And then, of course, whenever you have a dualism, you're going to find hybrids which have both elements. And again, we think we can see this. Bienvenue à la ferme is an interesting French example where they are encouraging visits to traditional family farms, but using really contemporary social media, very um, <clears throat> sophisticated ways. <clears throat> so. Going to my uh, last section about this idea of a label then, and based on what we, we've learned about short food chains, and we, we just tried to stand back from our study and think about the pros and the cons. So on one hand, if we were to have a label which would identify products from short food chains, um, labels can communicate important information to consumers, but especially if they're not buying directly from a producer. 
the converse of that is that many of these initiatives are a direct sale from a producer to a consumer, so you could argue that you don't need a label because you've got the communication directly. The second point is that a label can represent a framework or a benchmark. It can identify a concept that, has, that can then um, be protected, and so it can protect products from imitation. So those are on the pros. The cons is that consumers may be confused by more labels. <clears throat> there are already a lot of labels on food. Um, although some of the work we did with consumers in short food chains suggest that they are the type of consumers who do read labels very carefully. Um, <clears throat> labels could also impose costs, possibly, on producers. Although, on the other hand, there, is, there are some studies which show willingness to pay the premium for local food, so that may be counterbalanced. There's some important considerations, though. Firstly, what would the label certify? And we think there are two key issues. One is the origin of the product. Does the consumer know where it, where it was made, how, who made it? In other words, is there transparency in that food chain? And also the nature of the trade relationship. From looking at what motivates consumers to buy from these food chains, they want to know, was this product sold fairly? Did, it, did the uh, benefit go back to the producer? Did it support the local economy and the local farming system? And that's very important to a lot of people who buy this type of product. So in other words, a label needs to reflect the values of the, of the people who are involved. So I'm going to just skip that because I think I covered that. Recommendations. What we suggested is for the European Commission when they're thinking about this is they could provide a definitional framework and guidance. So for example, we could think about defining what short food chains are, uh, as, as they have done, for instance, in France. Um, but we could also look at the common requirements around quality, traceability, transparency and validation. The most successful labels oh, tend to have some kind of certification and, and uh, checking so that they can be trusted and, and relied upon. Um, the European Commission could also develop other measures because a label on its own won't solve all the problems facing smaller producers and small groups trying to initiate short food chains particularly training in marketing, in communications technology, logistics support, and this could be delivered through existing initiatives such as LEADER or the European Rural Development Network. Um, there's also a need to consider which, following on from that, which institutions would manage the scheme and how it would be funded. For instance, through the CAP Rural Development Policy, and this is already on the table being talked about, but also are there other policies like in social cohesion or, or health even, where we could look to support short food chains more, more directly. And also, a, a final point, given that many short food chains are organic or practising organic even if they're not certified as such, could we also consider how the support for organic initiatives could dovetail with support for short food chains? Um, thank you very much. Very rapid overview and look forward to discussing it further with you as the day goes on. Thanks very much. Thank you.